I always think it's a good idea to start a course by giving you some context uh, for the course and why it's being taught and why it's being taught this way uh, and some of the expectations that I have for you as someone who is enrolled in this course. So the first one we're going to be talking about is some context and some recent experiences that I've had. I've recently been working with MPC uh, on developing their 3D DMP Academy curriculum and teaching in their academy. And if you're not familiar with what the academy is, MPC is doing this really amazing thing where they are taking new college graduates and paying them to do an intensive training program. And at the end of this 12 to 16 week training program, they uh, become juniors in the department and have a year contract uh, with MPC. And so it's a really, really great thing for uh, new artists wanting to get into the industry. And um, it's really quite cool for MPC uh, to be reaching out and to do this kind of training. While developing the curriculum for MPC's academy and teaching at the academy, I've gained some insights about people wanting to get into matte painting and to become a matte painter. And so I'm going to be throwing out some numbers to you. And, and right here at the beginning, you may be wondering, why are we going over these numbers, especially since I'm talking about the MPC Academy and I'm not talking about the matte painting for filmmakers uh, training site. And so right at the end, it's all going to make sense uh, to you. And so uh, here are some of those numbers. So for the MPC Academy, uh, specifically the 3D DMP Academy, it was 16 weeks long. And um, within those 16 weeks, it's a full 40 hours a week for 16 weeks training. And so that's a lot of training over 16 weeks. However, um, many or all of the students were not doing uh, 40 hours a week. They were uh, doing extra time uh, to uh, really refine and develop their skills. And so um, I talked to one of the students, and he was doing about 70 hours a week. And so that is quite a bit. But um, uh, so let's say, you know, conservatively, um, let's go way on the conservative, conservative end. Let's say nine hours for six days a week because a lot of the students came in on the weekends. Um, and that uh, goes out to be about 54 hours a week. So if on the high end we had 70 hours a week, 54 is, is, uh, is a bit conservative. So uh, what I'm looking at here is what is the total number of hours that people spent in the academy? So 54 hours in a week times 16, that is 864 hours total uh, for the academy. Okay, so now this is the interesting bit because we're going to compare these number, this number of hours to a university education. So if I had a university education, uh, normal uh, load is about 12 credits. And they tell you that you're supposed to dedicate three hours to each credit every week. And so uh, 12 credits times three, that's 36 hours a week and there's 12 weeks in a semester uh, typically, and that gives you a grand total of 36. Uh, the 36 hours times 12 weeks is 432. However, not all of those university education hours are dedicated to your major or what you're wanting to go into professionally. And so um, if this is our total number of hours, 864, uh, half of those hours are dedicated to general education. So we would take that number, the 864, divide it by 2, and that gives us 432 hours. So if we wanted to get back up to what the academy hours are equal to, then we would have to times that by 2, and that would equal four semesters of a university education. So let's clear those numbers, and there's our four semesters that equals the same amount as the academy. So um, up till this point, we've been making an assumption, which is that one academy hour is equal to one hour of a university education. Um, and, uh, and are they equal? 
uh, I would say no, because you have MPC, which is an actual VFX company, a production environment where they're really working on shows. And in a university education, it's quite academic, and you have professors that are teaching you, not uh, professional VFX artists that are working currently in the industry. At least that is the case for the most part. So, um, but the question is, is one MPC hour, how many, how many university hours does that equal? So uh, is it two university hours? So one MPC hour equals two university hours. So our four semesters... Uh, turns into eight semesters, so it doubles at that point. Is it three university hours? Then it goes up to 12. And is it four? Does it go up to four? And so now we're up at 16 semesters, and depending on the university and their education, uh, how really productive and how well they do at training their students, you know, you could be up to 16 semesters that would equal an MPC academy. So what are you looking at? Three or four years university education. And uh, all of this uh, is a bit subjective, um, but uh, I know that my students uh, at MPC have told me um, that they learned more in the academy than they did uh, during their whole university education. So um, I don't think that this is very far off. So at this point, you're probably asking yourself, why are we going through all of these numbers when the map painting for filmmakers project has nothing to do with the academy? And uh, it really comes down to this. So all the people that went through the MPC academy had a previous degree or had work experience that equaled a degree. And you add to that the 3D DMP Academy, which was 16 weeks of intense training, which we've established could equal as much as a secondary uh, university degree. And all of this work and years of, of effort, and this qualifies them to be a junior in the department. So the point that I'm making here is that it is really, really hard hard to become a map painter. It takes a ton of work and a ton of training and education to hit the very minimum requirement of being a junior and being productive in a map department. So I'm not saying this to discourage you in any way. Hopefully with this information, you feel inspired that you're going to work harder I give you this information because I want you to have the proper context for your education. So it is up to you to figure out what you need to fill the gap between your degree and what you've got from your degree and what you need to be a junior matte painter in the future film industry. Enrolling in this course is definitely a good choice in filling the gap. One of the reasons that I created this course was because there are so few learning resources out there for matte painters. A lot of the training is too short, not comprehensive enough, and it kind of leads to this fragmented education for people wanting to become matte painters. By the end of this course, you will have an in-depth understanding of what camera projections are and how to use them, which is an essential part of a matte painter's education. So now that we've talked about the context of uh, this course, I can share with you some of the expectations I have for you as a participant uh, in the course. Uh, my first expectation is that you watch all of the training videos. I know that there might be the temptation to skip some videos or to end some videos early. It is important and essential that you understand all of the concepts that are, that are taught in those videos. And so watch every single one. Uh, download all the project files and work on those. Finish every exercise and complete every assignment. So I understand that this represents, this course represents a lot of time commitment for you, um, but I'm telling you that it will absolutely be worth it. Um, from my experience, there's no other way to understand camera projections than it is to be completely immersed in it. And this is what this course offers. And for my very last slide, and to wrap up our conversation here, it's, I know you can do it. It's a lot of hard work, and it's a lot of dedication, but I know you can do it. 
And so let's get started.